The dissolution of the monasteries were a shocking and immense land grab and financial grab that occurred during the reign of King Henry VIII. The suppression of the monasteries was a set of processes that disbanded monasteries, friaries and other centres of Catholicism following Henry becoming the supreme head of the Church of England. The shocking nature of this suppression was that the Crown pretty much pocketed the majority of their incomes, land, assets and buildings. For this, much of the property was sold off to fund Henry VIII's military campaigns. It was an incredible revolutionary event in which a king was legally allowed to do this and the dissolution showed that Henry was a rather brutal dictator. The huge seizure of land and buildings was not popular across England. For example, the Pilgrimage of Grace in the North was formed as a rebellion directly against this policy. Thomas Cromwell was placed in charge of getting rid of the monasteries and between 1536 and 1540, over 800 monasteries, abbeys, nunneries and friaries, many which had accumulated great wealth, had been seized and placed in possession of the king. The dissolution forced many monks and nuns out of their homes and made them homeless, but there was a much more brutal element to it, where many of these religious people were executed for refusing to leave or refusing to support the king. One such barbaric event is the brutal execution of Richard Whiting, whose death acted as a huge sign of the population to fall into line. So join us today as we look at the brutal execution of Richard Whiting, the abbot of Glastonbury Abbey. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Richard Whiting was born around the year 1460, and at this time England was still in the grips of the Wars of the Roses, with the throne being passed from the House of Lancaster to the House of York during the Civil War. He was educated at Glastonbury Abbey himself, and he then studied at Cambridge University and graduated in 1483. Following his graduation, he entered the priesthood and rose to prominence as a deacon, being ordained in 1500, and later as a priest the following year. He was a very learned man and returned then to Cambridge University to obtain a doctorate, but he also served as a chamberlain of Glastonbury Abbey and managed different areas of the building. In February 1525, the abbot of Glastonbury Richard Beer died and the monastic community gave up their right of choosing the next abbot and asked Cardinal Wolsey to make their choice for them. Cardinal Wolsey then chose Richard Whiting, the chamberlain, and he noted that he was an upright and religious monk, a provident and discreet man, and a priest commendable for his life, virtues and learning. So Whiting had been chosen and based on Thomas Wolsey's recommendation, he seemed like an ideal choice for the job. He lived a typical life of a medieval abbot at the House of Glastonbury, which at the time had a huge income, and was seen as having the highest net income of any of the English monasteries, which is later why it would become a target of the dissolution. Whiting himself was a fan of hunting, and mixed with royalty at times, being present in Parliament, but also presenting gifts to the King. During his time as abbot, he continued with the extensive building work of Glastonbury Abbey that the previous abbot had begun, which included the completion of another chapel at the east end of the church. He is a welcoming man, who encouraged the monks to help the poor, and twice a week the abbey would open its doors to help feed the poor of the local neighbourhood, and over time the monks' numbers of Glastonbury Abbey rose. At the time, Henry VIII had begun to become tired of his first wife Catherine of Aragon, and the fact that he did not have a male heir. For this, he began to look for avenues of getting rid of Catherine of Aragon, and despite appealing to the Pope for a divorce, the Pope would not grant him this what he wished. Henry had fallen in love with Anne Boleyn, and his need for a divorce became imperative, as Anne wouldn't engage too much with Henry without the problem of his first marriage being sorted. For this, Henry out of frustration broke from Rome, and was declared the supreme head of the Church of England. He was now the ultimate authority of the Church of England, at the expense of the Pope, which greatly offended Catholics across the country. The Abbot of Glastonbury Richard Whiting had even offered to help the King, along with other Catholic abbots to try and convince the Pope to grant Henry his divorce. In January 1535, Thomas Cromwell was named the Vicar General, which made him the King's second in command as Supreme Head of the Church. Later Cromwell suspended the authority of all bishops in England, so that six lawyers could complete surveys of the monasteries. Cromwell gave his lawyers 86 questions to inspect, in which they would meticulously scrutinise every element of the monastery, 
looking for slip-ups that they could use to shut down the monastic order of the house and seize the land, houses and riches within the order. If they could prove that an abbey for example had been living a life which could be considered to be at any point not in line with God, then they could shut it down. Following these investigations, Parliament met and nothing wrong was found at Glastonbury Abbey, however there were a number of seditious rumours at other abbeys which were discussed. For example, one abbot of another abbey was accused of being guilty of theft and selling the valuables, and also accused of keeping six prostitutes. Other abbots were accused of homosexuality, and one prior was even allegedly found in bed with a woman at 11 o'clock on a Friday morning, with another being described as a drunken knave living. Because of this, the King's and Cromwell's quest for greed and wealth, and the fact that the church was becoming more Protestant, the Act for the Dissolution of the Monasteries was passed, receiving royal assent. This stated that all religious houses with an annual income less than £200 would be suppressed. Abbot Richard Whiting was told that Glastonbury Abbey would be safe, but it wouldn't be for very long. In 1538, Cromwell's lawyers or agents yet again visited Glastonbury Abbey to look for fault, but they began to become critical of Whiting's leadership, noting division within the monks and accusing him of having favourites. He was also criticised for having spent too much time away from the monastery, neglecting his duties in favour of living in other manners. By January 1539, Glastonbury Abbey was the only monastery left in Somerset, with the rest having been dissolved, with their wealth being absorbed by the king and the monks being forced out. On the 19th of September 1539, the royal commissioners and investigators arrived at the abbey without warning. As the abbot was away, they walked into the abbey and ransacked the apartments of the abbot and seized much evidence and papers. They were there to find fault and find anything that could allow the closure of the abbey. The abbot was then taken to the abbey to answer questions, as they found allegedly arguments against the king's divorce and a copy of the life of Thomas Becket. Following the questioning, Richard Whiting was then sent straight to the Tower of London. The Tower of London during the Tudor period did develop a reputation for being a brutal prison, associated with execution, torture and interrogation. Once at the Tower, Richard Whiting, who at the time was an elderly and frail man, was interrogated by Cromwell himself. We don't really know the exact charge that he was accused of, but it's mostly considered that he was accused of treason. Whilst here it was found that Richard Whiting had been hiding objects from Cromwell's forces, and they found money and gold plate inside secure vaults. The investigators then wrote to Cromwell, saying that they now had knowledge and evidence that the Abbot of Glastonbury Abbey had committed many treasons. There is no evidence that Whiting was allowed a trial, and he was deemed guilty as he stood in the way of the investigators. Cromwell's writing states how the Abbot of Glaston to be tried at Glaston, and also executed there with his accomplices. A French ambassador would also confirm Whiting's fate, saying that he has lately been put in the tower in taking the Abbey's treasures valued at 200,000 crowns. They also found a book of arguments on behalf of Queen Catherine. As Whiting was a member of the House of Lords, he should have been condemned by an act of attainder, or an act of Parliament passed for that sole purpose. However, his execution occurred before Parliament met, and was completed in quick fashion. The old frail abbot, around 80 years of age, was taken to Somerset on the 14th of November 1539, where at his rushed trial, a jury condemned him to death. A jury was quickly assembled, and Whiting wasn't even allowed time to recover from his journey. Many of Whiting's friends and confidants also turned against him, being offered and bribed with a share of the Abbey's treasures. This trial was nothing more than a show, as the Abbot's fate was already sealed. Cromwell had already determined Whiting guilty, and his execution would be performed in brutal fashion. The following day on Saturday the 15th of November 1539, along with two of his monks who belonged to the Abbey, Richard Whiting was dragged through the local streets of Glastonbury, which he had known most of his life on a hurdle. He was taken in front of his abbey, which at the time was now empty, and was taken up to Glastonbury Tor for his horrific execution. The horses dragged the abbot up to the top of the Tor, a hill which looks over the town, and the abbot's execution was done in such a fashion to act as a clear deterrent for the population of England. Whilst on top of the Tor, a gallows had been assembled. 
It was noted how the Glastonbury Three took their deaths very patiently, whose souls God should pardon. From the gallows on top of Glastonbury Tor, the elderly and frail man of around 80 years, Richard Whiting, was hanged until almost dead. He was then taken whilst lifeless but still alive, and cut down from the gallows. He was then barbarically beheaded, with his corpse being divided up into four different parts. These different parts were then sent to the towns and villages of Wells, Bath, Ilchester and Bridgewater to serve as a stark warning. Richard Whiting's head was then fixed above the abbey that now seemed to be a ruin, and the head of the last abbot seemed to serve as a horrific reminder of how awful the dissolutions of the monastery could be. Glastonbury Abbey was one of the last monasteries to be dissolved, but the barbaric execution of Abbot Richard Whiting really does show how Henry VIII and Cromwell would stop at nothing to seize the riches of monastic buildings. At the heart of this story is a man who seemed to be a pillar of the community, who devoted his life to his faith and religion doing great good, however at the hands of a brutal religious change he suffered greatly. The story of Richard Whiting really is a horrific one, and his suffering should be remembered in the canon of English history. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.